Warriors. Want to go for the Benedetta oh, ban, or actually it's Guido ban, but they went for Benedetta. So it's Glue and Benedetta, two bans towards Aran. Are they possibly eyeing at a Paquito pick to deny Aran his usual style? If they put the Paquito in the hands of Boots, I mean, finally we're going to see this man have the, the chance, have the opportunity to really flex his muscles in the laning phase, not only just showing his macro, you know, team fight knowledge. They do have the first pick, so we'll go for, the, uh, let's assume that happens, or we'll have to have a no, plan B right here. If it is taken away, which it definitely is. is. Good combo, Copa Kido, being picked by Coach Ari. Now Aura, what do they respond with, especially in the EXP laner? I would probably, you know, leaning towards something along the lines of Terizla, just to set up for Kabuki to be able to execute that Blazing Duet quite freely, especially when you have Minotaur on the other side and Frederick. A lot of CCs to take care of. I'm thinking more X board up against the Minotaur, oh, up right. against the Fredrin. Tanky members are probably going to go for... I'm not sure about the last pick for Onik, but yeah, Novaria and uh, Xborg would be pretty solid. They would have a lot of kite, they would have a lot of tanky members, beefy too, and range. Yes, yeah, another in line with what they have shown so far here with their composition. Gives them a good all-in potential as well, and ways to really zone away Onik during those critical moments, but no, not none of the above, Mirko. It's gonna be the Valentina and that Ruby, so more crowd yeah, control and chances me. to steal away a massive ultimate. Right now, just the Minion Fury, I would, I would think. But there's one more pick from Onik, and it's usually the most surprising one in the hands of Sans. What's surprising here? I think the standard pick should be Novaria, I guess, but... Oh, that's... Oh, oh, oh that would be yeah. good! But, that's yeah. but the Valentina could steal it. Yeah. If True. they dive, it would be... I mean, they already have Minotaur, so... Adding all that doesn't really matter for me because it's already a good ultimate two together. Yeah, I think the little Roman with big ultimates, but it might be too risky to pick up the Odette. Something safe would be Lilia, right? Yep, that's it. <laughs> oh, overboard. The, never the mind. We don't do Sans. safe. We don't do safe at all. Okay, so the only possible threat for Sh Sans here, I think it's going to be Kabuki. He has to watch out for wow. Kabuki first before going for that Mystic Gush. Rashi, what's your thought? Before Ooh. that, I have a question, Rashi. Ruby, first time for Aran in the XP. We know he's crazy with it, you know? He's the first guy to go full damage Lethal Ignition Benedetta. Are we going to see a full damage Ruby in the XP lane? Nah. I don't know. I feel like it must be some kind of semi-build for sure. They do have a Barats and a Mathilda. So technically, if they want to go for that, they do have the tankiness already available that is, that's filled in by the other heroes. So it's a possibility, but I don't feel like that full damage assassin ruby will bring that much value as compared to a tanky, sustainable, reapplying crowd control ruby. Yeah, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Two teams has already picked their lineup. It's the battle of the dwellers of the sky. Will the sky turn red or yellow? In FBL Indonesia season 13, it's Onik versus Aura. 4 0 is what Onik are looking for. Still untouchable this season. Though I do have another question here. Sorry to overload you guys with questions, but in this matchup, XP, you're an XP laner, Chefin. Ruby versus Paquito, how does that go? I think in early game, obviously Paquito gonna wreak some havoc, especially the damage trade is gonna favor Paquito more than Ruby, but the later the game goes, you rack up those defensive items and also some a little bit of lifesteal. I don't think Ruby is uh, in no danger at all when it comes to 1v1 against Paquito. Ooh, what I wanna... Wait for a bit before you make that call, Shevin, because Aran just got beat down. In the lane, the Pakira is going to be so dangerous. With the Quantum Charge, though, he'll get a bit more a bit of sustain, and he's going to be a lot more mobile than the Ruby, so the roam game is what I'm looking at oh. as Yaoi just gets chunked down. That's a Pakito threat that Onik will definitely try and use while they have it. Yaoi, a bit of a... That's sort of his comfort zone, I would say. He's used to this pick-off heroes, those Kajas, this Chao, and this fun. This time, it's a Mathilda. It's gonna enable his teammate to be able to get those objectives and also kills. Harry a bit, a bit aggressive here against Yaoi. Of course, it's the recall. Looking at the emblems though, like almost exact same. In the jungle, it's the exact same. But in the EXP lane, you see the quantum charge against the break smite, the tankiness for the movement speed. So I assume Boots will be playing a bit more craftily, moving around the sides instead of just going all in in the front line. And in the gold lane, it's Kabuki with a bit of tankiness and the tenacity. And Albert going for more attack speed, more damage as well, 1v1. So Albert's showing his signature aggressive style. Look at this, the setup towards the turtle. I think Aura 
already has something in mind, has the plushes covered by Yaoi and Yeskyo, but Goku and Kairi actually goes for a Thriller Ashi. What's your thought of that? You just want to get fast clear, and in this condition, in this matchup right here, where both want to try and contest for the neutral objective, having more a faster clear is definitely a big uh, a big factor, but also the control here. And Onyx definitely has more card control in the early stages. Two-man taunt from Kyrie, who jumps in with his Fury as well. But it will be secured by Goku, using the death turn as well. Come now, only now does he use it to try to look for an initiation or to counter it. Onyx, concede. Oh, how cheeky that is, Arashi. Yes. Minotaur hasn't had the level 4 yet, but yes, Kel already had the Minotaur locked on. Yeah. <laughs> That's just... Impudence coming in from Aura, and it's great to see that they're not buckling under the pressure here, going up against the favorites for this matchup. Oh, taking with the talent prediction by Samsung Galaxy. We, we know what's going on with Mirko, but hey, for the Do most you? part... <laughs> I mean, over there, Lim Kochul is with you on the Indonesian desk, Mirko. Yeah. It's just me and Lim. Or actually, Lim alone. It really depends on how you see it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> very, very convenient. So, first total already secured by Aura. Very good, very positive early game so far, but it's only 300k. I mean, 300 gold. Still definitely a minor gold advantage. And But considering the fact that Aura did get the turtle, it seems like Onik is keeping up in farm in clear speed. So that is something that Aura definitely has to take in, take in uh, consideration. It can be winning, oh. but oh, is it enough? Whoa, wow, Jensen is welcome onto Keyboy. That's the roamer pinned down. Now it's a mystic gush onto the minis. Whoa, we're gonna be onto Dabble. He's gonna do it from Kabuki in the back. Just freaking happy. Oh. Finds an appraiser's wrath, gets a bit of HP back. It's only a one for zero. Trained it, and it's Gogun who falls on it. Win out. But. That looks so good for Aura Arashi. What happened there? Well, the fact that they were the ones pulling the trigger on the play means that they have less crowd control tools to really try and win out in the fight because they had to spend some to really get the catch in the first place. Oh. For Onyx, it's the exact opposite. They layer everything perfectly and they know who they're going for. And they have a lot more burst damage at their disposal. The Gord against the Valentine and I, we're seeing it again. You're fine, the Master Assassin Ooh. doing work. Kabuki trying to sustain back in this lane. Master Assassin doing work, but also Tenacity from Kabuki also doing work. Seems like he knows that he's going to be the prime target for Onyx, especially Keyboy had those knockups. You can't really escape the knockups when you're trying to go in for Kabuki. Second turtle, Yaoi dragging the turtle. I feel like for Onyx, they are very happy to go for those pickoffs, go for those counter engages like Whoa. that, you know? You get caught with one crowd control tool, you never know when the rest of the team are going to follow up on it. For Aura, it's the exact opposite. They have to try and find a really favorable fight and, you know, faint, move back and forth a bit in order to bait out some of these spells using the Mathilda, one of the power picks they prioritize, picking it first. Oh, Gugun! Or do you see that to this welcome? Kyrie steals it away from under his feet. Gugun now stunned up and Mystic Projector and a Mystic Gush doing damage oh. as he flickers out. Safety is around, tries to dive into the back. Kyrie brought back to the team by Gugun oh, with the wow. missiles now as Kyrie will be taken out. Boots. Looking for an angle, Oran, the Oran Wolf King stopping him in his tracks. And Onik will back away. They will take that trade. Not for long, the Aura are actually going to be the one oh, who walking oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. Knockout strike to knock Yaoi out. Oran jumping in all the way under the turret. Gogun here backing him up onto Keyboy. Will try to look for more, but in the end, they will be forced to back away. And Onik get an amazing double missing project. Oh, oh, Gush again from Sans. The highlights. Just pouring on over and over again. Or I thought they had a sandwich, but it looks like it's gonna be a knuckle sandwich for boots. Oof. Oh man. We have right. time to process. Those micros. We're, we're getting up to get back into the game. And it looks like. Is it still the same? Yep. I believe. Still pretty same. Yeah, I don't think anything big has happened just yet. I want to call some attention to the battle spells though, because Aura does have to be on the clear line. That's the same for Onik, and they don't have a Matilda either. So Onik is doubling down and just standing their ground and trying to beat out in damage output with the true damage coming in from the Gord and the carry. But if Albert gets caught here, which happens due to his aggressive nature, that could be this window of opportunity that Aura could be looking for, especially with Yaoi facilitating it. Look at that. Uh, Radiant Armor first item for Soul. What's gonna happen here? The projectile and the Gush. A good guiding win from Yaoi though prevents the die from happening. Albert doing a whole lot of damage onto that turret, sieging it down real quick. And Ron is already down to a quarter of his HP again. Chunked down. Still able to sustain back up. Gugun on a turtle. 
Onik doing the same thing. Sans barely getting out of those missiles from bringing him back. Harry's holding on to the turtle right now as Gogun is still one level ahead. Circling Eagle over to Keyboy, knocks him up. That's his welcome. Leads up Kyrie and the Retribution Trophy oh! there. Gogun finds it. Keyboy very low. So able to jump out. Mr. Gush and he prays to appraise his wrath. Comes down, but Aura, they just back up. Kabuki is in the midst of it all, gets knocked up by Kai. Pops in that Purify, and Yaoi will be flickering out to safety. A turtle traded in again. This time, no kills. Wow, 2-1 to one so far for Gugun, but oh, that was so unfortunate, man. Arashi, if Kabuki was fast enough to press that Purify, things could have been way more south for Onik. I mean, it's already pretty south, man. They lost the neutral objective, and they did, I guess, trade it now. Uh, the turrets in the bottom and top side, but all of got a turret in the middle of all that, because they did go for a big swap. They put Kabuki alone on the other side, just farming, and so Aran was already faster to, re to rotate, to be present in the fight. And especially early on, eight, eight minutes, the fighters actually have a lot more impact, a lot more things to oh say. Who's trying to save his turret? will be successful in doing so. But man, Kabuki now has that power spike. He has the Golden Staff and the Team Hunter Sword. So he's gonna be outputting a lot more damage than Onik can just ignore. Especially because Kyrie has been taken very low in towards the mid to end phase of all these all these fights. Like. Audience prediction still as strong as ever. 80% for Onik. I mean, we've seen a lot of times where Onik were in a back foot and somehow, some way, they still won the game with like one crazy engage from Keyboy. A lot of times, actually, internationals or national level competition. And that's why it's 80 20, very cool. For sure. Onik is definitely still favorites here. Even though early on they are losing the neutral objective game, they're still up ahead here in terms of kills and the gold lead. Also, still favoring them. So, Albert's been farming really well. But really, when it comes to gold, who's holding most of it for Onik, Arashi? For Onik? I feel like it's a bit more spread out, actually. I think we have to wait till we see the charts to know for sure. I think for now, a lot of it is still being given to Albert. Knowing that he has to scale toward the late game. Boots! Whoa! Mask of the Oasis. Right there to save Kabuki. That would have been crazy. An assassination of Kabuki up top. He had to use his Purify, yep. and that's a Huge green light for Onik to go for the Lord. Boots is still up top. This might be the chance for retaliation, but Gugun mm -hmm. might be a bit over standing here. You were already eyeing for a opening. I feel like whoever goes for the other team first instead of the neutral objective will come out on top right here. We're seeing a big battle between counter engages, oh, mainly man. facilitated by the Minyu and Fury coming from Kibo and Yeheskiel. So, I feel like one of these days, one of these teams are gonna just jump straight onto the jungler and try and get an instant pick-off before the fight even begins. I think so far, Sunset's boots, the only thing that's in their mind is how to I chunk up this HP because they're not going out of their bush to deal damage to all the frontliners around in Gukun. Look at that. Mm. Right on Q. What a menace. Boots with the assassination potential right here, but oh, Keyboy gets very, very close. Look at Boots though, he is squishy, so he needs to be a bit more careful here. Knockout strike, two times onto a run. Get some low. The Guiding Wind still there to grant him a bit of HP back. 10k HP on the Lord, 8k now, down. Boots, jumped into the back, trying to zone, Guiding Wind and Circling Eagle from Yahweh to get out. Gugu now to miss a ball, Keyboy is the one who secures it. Yeheskiel goes in for an attempted steal with a stolen Minion's Fury out of the two junglers. <laughs> it's Keyboy! I mean, that's what happens if there's too much CC around the map. It's gonna, like, someone's gonna steal it from the junglers. I mean, when you time the clock control so well, so perfectly, and when the margin of error is 20 HP, you can bet a lot of money that the roamers will be able to sneak some of these neutral objectives away. Oh, man. Now, for the most part, to answer your question, Mirko, Boots has the gold advantage. He's going for full physical defense, man. Dominance Ice and a Blade Armor, trying to counter Kabuki, one of the main reliable damage output sources. And only with a Hunter Strike, he's able to zone everyone away. And that adaptation really allows them to get control there, but he's fighting now in the bottom side. Oh, what's gonna happen? Onto Boots 2v1, Boots gets the shielding, dashes away right now. Kabuki oh. tries to chase him, but he leaves the turret up top. 
to be defended by only oh, no. good oh. mistake on the Yehez kill was stolen away. The oh. minion fury goes with one HP and they don't even want to go for him. They know there's a flask of the oasis. They get a turret with a first lord and they're gonna siege even more. Boots is playing the way Oran does on the Paquito. The margin Sarashi once again, it's not just objective fights, it's also when there's a team fight. Just one HP, that's literally one for Gugun. Oof, man, Gugun just had no way out right there. That is the pickup potential we've been talking about. The single target focus damage that Onyx has at their disposal. Now with Keyboy securing the flash of the Oasis as well, the team fights are gonna get even more difficult. That is before they can even deal with boots right here. Usually we see boots, or we see torpedoes who are trying to go for a split push mentality, go for a sprint to try and get a, a lot more value, a lot shorter cooldown on the battle spell. But he's also making plays in the team fights. That is why he's using that flicker, and he's been doing great. He really has. Boots Ooh. has been doing even better. Kabuki gets <laughs> chunked to half HP, and Boots knows that. That's all he wants to do. He just wants to chunk Kabuki right before these team oh, fights. Wow. These skirmishes Whoa. are on with a C Halberd. Yep. All right, so he has a War Axe and Sea Halberd and a Brute Force Breastplate. So movement speed, stacking it up, and also going for a lot of damage here. He might be the one that's sent over to try and deal or zone with Sans right here. I mean, I'm on board, man, because so far Kabuki is not present at all Oops. in the team fight. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. But I probably would expect Sans to Ooh. be a bit... Oh my goodness gracious! He's trying to take it away, certainly, with that Mystic Projectile and Gush. I think so. That's the odd potential you have on a Gord. That was what allows this Gord to really rise in popularity. The fact that you can have good wave clear, safe wave clear, because you can leave the Mystic yeah. Field there, but so also annoying. have a lot of ways to go for a catch, a pickoff, and still output a lot of damage in AoE fashion in the later stage of the game. Now with Onik controlling the Lord Pit, I think Aura will have to try and find a way in now. It's going to be a lot more difficult. Boots, boots. He's waiting for Kabuki, jumps Ooh. in right now. Does the win of nature get popped? No, it's only the guiding win right now for Yaoi. Albert walks up, Aran gets assassinated, one more hit! Aran flickers Ooh. out to safety just in time, barely. And they chunked Aura enough to maybe go for the Lord for free. Gugun is in no position to contest. Sans pops in that Mystic Gush to zone him away. Perfect execution of this Lord take for the Sky Kings. We've talked about this, Arashi, the killer mentality, the difference of Albert and CW, <laughs> just... There you go, that's it. <laughs> I mean, that was just layers and layers of play from Onik. The fact that Boots was able to make everyone panic because they thought that, oh, Kabuki's gonna pick off. Before you know it, Aran is the next target. Now, Gugun! Oh, Retribution, no. Mystic Gush. There's a guy who win to grant him to safety. Now we like, take a look at the items. Oof, Onik just not letting, letting Aura breathe at all. Sans is going for the double wand. Built here along with the Enchanted Talisman, so a lot of cooldown already available. He's just gonna spam it out, and even if you don't get hit by the Mystic Projectile, if you get slowed just a bit, the whole roster of Onik have a lot of catch up potential. Circling Eagle onto the back, Kyrie with the taunt. Trying to siege this down, Albert free hitting, will be able to take this turret down as two base turrets. And Lord still up top. Yeah, his skill's been tanking it now. Finally, Gugun takes the aggro, clears it out. Minion wave in the mid lane, still super minions coming down. Aran, oh. getting caught in the mist, projectile taunts it up, and now still caught in the mist, gush for such a long time. Kyrie gets eaten now, spat back out. Minion Fury oh. onto the back by Keyboy. But yeah, Skill doing the same thing, not enough damage to follow it up. Oh, Kabuki's already so low. Boots assassinates him in the back, and Albert executes the game plan. Now it's Kabuki who pops in a blazing duet, not enough damage. Sans is still. At half HP, Albert is healing back. Kabuki, battle mirror image in front. Albert jumping forward, Mystic Gush! No oh, he tried to predict the battle mirror image, but Kabuki is still able to defend. Dodges away from the Mystic Projectile. Sans needs to find an angle. Oh, he gets it. God. The glowing one is ticking on, and the Mystic Projectile has to be dodged away by Kabuki with the battle mirror image. Now with Sans, who is sieging down the mid base turret, he finds it. He doesn't get the Mystic Projectile <laughs> though. And Aura defend 16 minutes in. How you? Have you ever seen this? It's a 1v1 base battle between a mid laner and a gold laner, Sans. That was like, I would say, one step further, like one step too much. Predicting that Mystic Projectile, he should have gone for it, man. He shouldn't have predicted it. Just, I mean, the, yeah. the fact that Ani even went for the end there, kind of, to try and get the kill onto Kabuki, is surprising enough for me. Because usually, <laughs> you see a more decisive, a more disciplined Onik, but there, they're like, okay, you know, the ways are not available, but we'll get you somehow. 
It's almost like Albert influenced the rest of the team to go in with that killer instinct. Wow. Man, the base turret is gone for Aura, but look at the gold. Before this, it was like 7.6k, now it's 4.2k, so... Oh no! Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> he can't keep getting away with this, man! Yeah, That's the third time in this game! He keeps getting it done! And that is the big factor here. The difference in magic damage output between the head skill and Sans, and from how far. For the most part, the if you look at the itemization, even Boots only now has the final item being an oracle, right? He was building physical defense for the longest time, knowing that the head skill has to pick and has to pick up the minion fury instead of higher damage spells in these fights. The same can't be said for Aura, oh, no. just like that. The zoning the, the zoning ultimate from Sans. And also, just to add to that, Arashi, I believe uh, Yeheskel actually prioritized the anti-region item instead of penetration. So, no threat at all for the frontliner of Onik in terms of like magic damage. They can stack up the physical damage item or like physical defense item as much as he can. Well, I think the first item, at least for the Valentina, was the Lightning Truncheon. But again, how close can you get to the backline of Onik to output that damage? It doesn't seem like Onik, especially Sans and Albert, are too concerned about it. Sans now has the Winter Truncheon, but I believe it, that's not really made to try and deal with, you know, with the, with the burst potential. It's more about trying to avoid the Blazing Duet, maybe, or Aran just jumping in, trying to burst him down. How do you defend this? How do you defend this against Sans and Alpert? Boots is still looking for an angle to fight. Aran trying to hold Keyboy down. They're actually doing a good amount of damage. He has you. What? All the way in the front gets baited in by Sans. And he falls before Onik even looked for a full team fight. Kyrie in the front now holding Aran down. Mr. Gush dodged away from Kabuki. He's taking oh, a wow. whole lot of damage from that, though. Goes back to the battle mirror image. They have been able to defend right now oh, as Aran gets taunted up. The guiding win is there, but Aran doesn't go for it just yet. Aim offended to lock boots down. Kabuki on a killing spree this time round. An appraiser scratch on the back. Now it's a winner truncheon by Gugud. The Minus Fury, but they stay Over. objective. They target the base down and they secure game number one. What a game. What a game. I'm already excited for game number two. It looks like it was a silent domination, at least until the late game for Onik. They're not really dominating in terms of kills, but they know they have to choke Aura little by little. The gold lead piled up, and finally, just insanity.